what is up guys it's time for dylan back at it again with another crypto video thank you guys for tuning in you guys are awesome if you're new here subscribe bell icon get notified when i post the videos because it's all time sensitive in today's video you already know what we got to do we got to number one talk about what's going on with this cryptocurrency market it's absolutely going bonkers it's a great day to be in crypto when we have pumps like this this reminds us of why we're doing what we're doing to begin with bada bing bada boom and then number two we got to talk about of course the jpg store drama right cardano nft the main marketplace in our ecosystem there is some drama and it's coming to light through this man right here fettuccine one of the ogs in the space really holding it down and providing some receipts for everyone so i've got to break down day two and then of course day three plus four which was today final days condensed into one we're breaking it down in today's video, so make sure you guys stay tuned until the end so you don't miss out on any of this important information. First thing we have to do, as always, take a quick look at the markets. As you guys can see, global crypto market cap has finally regained that $1 trillion range. Love to see it. Now, it is a little bit late in the day. It's 10.33 p.m. where I'm at. Um, and a little bit earlier in the day, we were actually up about 6% on the day. So all these percentages are going to be a little bit off just because we're late in the day so the main gains really have like worn off if you know what i mean so anyway bitcoin really leading that charge at points hitting twenty three thousand dollars regaining that level twenty three thousand dollars that's big 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 time why because we finally regained all of the losses from the ftx scandal it's big news it's big news right it only took a couple months for all of that drama to unfold right it's not even really done right we even had genesis yesterday filing for bankruptcy what impact did that have on the crypto space as you guys can see none because we're up right fantastic to see so it just shows bitcoin is resilient it's stronger than ever and it's here to stay so i love it and on top of that right jamie diamond comes out and says bitcoin is a big fraud right and what else i can't remember the other words basically coming out and talking smack about bitcoin yet again and guess what this time it's not really having an impact i remember seven years ago six years ago five years ago when jamie diamond would come out make comments and bitcoin would dump hard looks like that's not happening anymore so fantastic news goes to show don't don't sleep on bitcoin but anyway moving on down you guys know bitcoin moves market follows everything's pretty much up like i said earlier the percentages are all off right now but everything's up massively from yesterday right we got ethereum back up over 1600 bnb back up over 300 even xrp getting in on the action back up over 40 cents and cardano look at that 37 cents love to see it and you already know we're here for the long term baby so even if this is a dead cat bounce right even if this is a fake out right in the dead cold of crypto winter if this does happen to be a sucker's rally that's okay because we're here for the long term as you guys know and if things do happen to go back down to the downside why are we not stressing because we're dollar cost averaging right back into those positions at lower prices gotta love it but of course, none of this is financial advice. You guys already know that. You would not be stupid enough to listen to me. Let's get that straight. But anyway, moving on along. First thing I wanted to say, you know, I don't really talk about technical analysis on my channel. I don't really look at the charts too much. But I will say this right here. I love when big statements like this come out, right? This big rally is due to this, the RSI copying what happened in the 2018 bear market recovery. Now, as you guys know, that 2018 bear market recovery was absolutely astounding. It went from like 3,000 all the way up to whatever it was, 20,000, big, big time, right? What was that, like 6X, 7X, something like that? So, uh, you know, even though I don't really look at te technical analysis too much, you can't really ignore it, right? But anyway, moving on along really quick, before we jump into the JPG store drama, I just wanted to quickly take a look at some of these NFT prices, as always. As you guys can see, Clay Nation still above 4,000 ADA for the floor price. Love to see it. As you guys know, Clay Nation to me is like the premier NFT project on Cardano. I don't care what anyone says. Even though Ape Society does have a higher floor price, I do love Ape Society. Don't get me wrong. But for me, Clay Nation is like the OG premier one of a kind collection on this blockchain, more so than Space Buds. 
Now, Space Buds does have a special place because it's the first on Cardano. But to me, that's not enough. To me, Clay Nation is the first good one. Now, I hope that's not too controversial. But anyway, let's take a look. The Ape Society is still hovering right at 9,000 ADA. And I did tell myself if we did see a 5,000 ADA floor price for uh, Ape Society, I would be trying to acquire one. I always feel like such a dick when I hope that the price of a project goes down. And I hope people don't take that wrong. I just want it to go down so I can buy it and then it could go up. No. <laughs> you guys know what I mean. Drop it down below. What projects do you want to see price dip so you can scoop them up? But anyway, moving on along. Day two, let's talk about it. Fettuccini, you guys know who this guy is. He's one of the OGs in the space. He, he came out with Angel Baby Hit Squad and the Demon Hit Squad right on Ethereum and Cardano and basically created a, a pretty awesome bridge between a project on one and the other. So this guy's super cool. 20K followers, very well respected and renowned in the Cardano community. And when this guy speaks, people listen. Anyway, as you guys know, the video I posted yesterday broke down day one of this whole fiasco. And essentially what happened was this guy, Blake Lock Brown, who's the CEO of JPG Store, was essentially holding back any competition from entering the Cardano community through threats and through intimidation. He literally even went as far as to threaten to report someone to the SEC. That's not okay. That's like the crypto devil. So, <laughs> and we don't want that on anyone. He did drop day two yesterday. I was not able to actually cover it. So we're gonna cover that right now. And then we're gonna cover day three and day four, which actually dropped today. So you guys are gonna get it all. Just gave you a quick rundown of day one. Let's jump right into it. Day two, let's go. Exposing Blake Lock Brown, day two. I'd like to shed light on something that I believe was extremely unbecoming and underhanded of Blake specifically revolving around Catalyst Fund 9. As some of you know, Catalyst is a method for the community to receive funding from Cardano through voting mechanisms. These funds are awarded for a variety of reasons. Fund 9 proposals went out at the beginning of July. Project Catalyst is something that I think is extraordinarily awesome, right? It is one of the best things that Cardano has to offer, in my opinion. And it really is something that sets Cardano aside from other blockchains. And the reason why is because it allows Cardano's funds that are natively introduced into the system, right? And are held in the treasury to be allocated to users and developers that are pushing the Cardano blockchain forward. And the way that those users are able to acquire these funds is through users voting for it. It's awesome. It's totally grassroots and it's an awesome way to crowdfund in the ecosystem keep everything in-house i think it's an awesome idea and it's like i said it's something that really keeps cardano apart from other projects but anyway let's keep reading voting then occurred september 5th and closed out september 19th jpg submitted nine proposals for various developments that were needed to be voted on during that period you can see the proposals in this tweet as you guys can see now you know in my opinion these are all pretty valid proposals right of course they're all valid proposals as you guys know, JPG Store is one of the biggest marketplaces on the Cardano blockchain. So these guys do need funding to make this operation happen. But let's keep reading. Only two days after voting for Fund9 came to a close, JPG had a surprise announcement. They'd been funded for $6 million. Yeah, that is. That's kind of strange. So they got funded for $6 million two days after the Catalyst. So I think what he's trying to say is that somebody had already donated $6 million to these guys. And they didn't disclose that until after the funding came to an end. Interesting. Let's keep reading. It's strange then that on July 28th, three months earlier, we were made aware of the funding of $6 million by another party that was passed up for funding for that reason. That's even before proposals were locked in. Wow. So literally exactly the same exact thing, right? People were passed up for the exact same thing. Wow. Interesting. Before you say, that says by wave and they were funded by SeaWorld. They're the same and that is no hate towards SeaWorld. I believe they are seriously going to help our ecosystem. This is calling attention to JPG's communication. Interesting. Blake reinforced their need for catalyst funding here in mid-September after some community backlash. Quoted, we could use this funding catalyst better than most developers and teams. Not all developers and teams, but most. And to be honest, I do think that that's a valid statement that they could use the funding. 
if they didn't already receive six million dollars in funding i mean I, who knows right i mean how big is this operation how many people are they employing you know i remember going to uh cnft con in las vegas and seeing their booth and they did have a lot of people but i mean six million dollars worth plus they need an, an extra amount of money from project catalyst interesting anyway let's keep reading jpg received funding on two of their nine proposals for 50k and 26k respectively a few other proposals were approved but the funding in those sectors ran out before it could get to them for those who don't know catalyst has specific amounts of money that get dedicated to categories they fund the top proposals based on votes until they run out of money in that sector would the cardano community have voted for jpg's nine proposals if they knew that they had received six million dollars from cardano's vc branch three months earlier than announced that's exactly what i was talking about when i read it earlier these people received the money and then they kept it on the hush hush so that they could get more money from project catalyst that's not cool right not why is that not cool because them getting money from project catalyst is taking money away from other people who could be developing on the blockchain that really need the money not cool let's keep reading unfortunately the two jpg proposals that did receive funding displaced funds from two projects from other amazing community members who were the next accepted proposals on the list nils at nils code you guys can check them out right here for the community integration into web communities and social media which we need we need decentralized social media on a blockchain and come on we want it on cardano and then of course project noom project noom at of course the twitter you guys can go check them out if you're interested for the integration of digital identities to solve disputes and intellectual honesty between musical artists interesting that sucks so those two projects lost out on big bucks because jpg store decided to be greedy that's the bottom line let's keep reading some people were made aware of another serious issue that you can read here where there was a potential for jpg to use the funds in their smart contract your ada to vote for or against proposals they saw fit wow that's ridiculous a potentially incredible issue for using other funds to sway for wow so that means they could have literally used your money in smart contracts to vote for themselves that's not cool that's called stuffing the ballot box come on not okay thankfully that last part was made public at the time and squashed before it happened but more food for thought of what could have been on top of the omission from the cardano community wow stay tuned for day three that sucks man that, that's really that's rough hey d clay i couldn't have said it better myself classic straight up let's do that quick anyway let's keep reading day three day four let's break it down let's wrap it all up put everything together what's going on exposing blake lock brown day three plus four i'm condensing these into the final two days because i don't want to deal with this anymore I want everything to be in the open my issue is with an individual and the amount of hate i've received for shedding light on these issues is insane damn that does suck right just for bringing this stuff up you know you got it but hey that's the price you pay right takes courage to bring truth to light my friend so shout out fettuccine really taking one right in the chest right in the chin for all of us so let's keep reading right the issues that will be covered are centralization lack of security and lack of support for the community make of each what you will and ultimately it's on you to decide how you how it makes you feel one the cost of minting is predatorily low we have awesome minting services that have been community grown and developed, such as Peppermint, Yepple, these guys, and of course, you already know Ada and Will. Shout out to the boy Cash and more. Of course, JPG is using fees earned from the marketplace and bankrolled from Cardano's VC branch and Catalyst to push, oops, to push costs down to unsustainable levels for these other minting services. Wow, that's kind of shitty, dude oh man not okay the lowest these services could go is around eight percent jpg is charging five percent to mint we've already seen minting teams go under and merge to try to survive in these conditions it's also a lot harder for an nft project to succeed without access to the launchpad requirement for using the launchpad is minting with them man that is such bunks they're literally gatekeeping 100 
Let's keep reading. Number two, limiting API access to community created platforms. They make it extremely difficult or impossible for specific groups to use any of the data they collect if it doesn't serve their purpose. I'll let the various groups speak on that if they choose. And of course, number three, did you know that you could create a mock JPG using their smart, con smart contract and fully omit royalties? It also throw a wrench in the data aggregator stats because the transactions would be indistinguishable from proper ones. A point of failure within their team could allow for a developer to list a high value asset and get the full amount from the sale and omit royalties. Might not seem like much on a small sale, but a 100K plus sale at 7.5% royalties, a single move makes them an extra 75K. Yeah, you know what I mean? I totally agree. And then, of course, number four, attempting to acquire community created services and stipulating they can't be used for uses outside of JPG. I'll let these groups speak on it if they choose. The overarching theme is that JPG is using Cardano's VC investment to make everything that has to do with Cardano and NFTs theirs to stifle others attempting to build in the space. Yeah. Totally. If we allow this to continue, there will be no innovation. And that's true because guys, innovation comes from competition. That's just the bottom line. Number five, refusing sponsorship of CNFTCon after party and sponsorship of CNFTCon due to lack of ROI for a company that has made so much from the community you'd think they'd want to give back. That's true. I mean, God damn it. Just a sticker and a pin. That was kind of monk couple of lousy t-shirts come on you guys make millions of dollars you could have given back to the community number six commingling of personal and business funds accidentally receiving royalties from 39 affected collections into this is what i was talking about yesterday 39 affected collections it wasn't just one guys 39 of them that i bet did not sign up for royalties or oh we made an error it was supposed to be five but we put seven and those funds where did they go they went right into these fool's pockets so i mean come on accidentally receiving royalties from 39 affected collections into blake's personal wallet for months apology made after being discovered yeah good one. that's no apology at all this wallet was actively being used to purchase nfts i seem to remember something about a company not being able to protect you when funds get commingled it's also pretty obvious where funds coming into a wallet came from i mean come on numbers <clears throat> number seven of course issues of where their initial smart contract came from i'll let the affected parties <laughs> wow so i bet people i bet there's a dispute that people actually made this smart contract these guys stole it but of course these aren't really accusations this is all allegedly of course number eight lack of an audit or peer review before launching security is not priority number nine lack of innovation no auctions auctions should this should have been done months ago years ago no auctions, no collection offers, no auto support for on-chain NFTs, no CIP68 acceptance, no R-Weave support for the actual marketplace before branching into the minting and launchpad. Yeah, because you know why? Because they're after money, of course. Number 10, attempt to centralize listing such purchases with the guise of protecting royalties. Thinking JPG have to sign off on any transaction that was made would have made it possible to block an aggregator from listing off of their site. Come on. Number 11, lack of accounting after a year. Admitted when the royalty issue was brought to light, right? A lot of people are too nervous to bite the hand that feeds them. But these actions are holding our space back and pushing out those that care about our space to more supportive blockchains. And that's just the bottom line. Cardano is supposed to be better than that. And we have people that are coming in. And you know, this is the Wild West. You got to keep that in mind. This is crypto. This is the Wild West. Things aren't really legislated like they should be. You know, there's really not much government oversight. So people are going to be taking advantage. But let's finish up. Most of this could be solved by creating a standard cross marketplace listing smart contract committed to by all marketplaces to allow for proper competition. But hey guys, that's really all I have for you guys today. That that really was crazy breakdown, you know, crazy, 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 crazy. Biggest marketplace on Cardano for NFTs. Who is behind it? Nobody even knows anybody. That's all I have for you guys today. If you guys made it this far, you guys are awesome. Smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I try to post daily Cardano, Cardano NFT videos for you guys. 
If that's something you're into, follow along. You guys have a beautiful day, beautiful night, wherever you guys are. Dylan is out.